Hi third graders, this is Miss Raymond, and last week I really enjoyed reading your feature articles where you included text features and text boxes to make your writing more compelling. And this week we are going to review those purpose those text features and the purpose of them. And then we will be focusing on using correct capitalization and punctuation in our feature articles. So let's go ahead and get started. In the past, over the past few weeks, you have been working hard to create and learn about feature articles. And feature articles are pieces of nonfiction text that teach the reader about a specific topic. They are organized in a way that is compelling and engaging for the reader. That's really what text features are for. They help the reader learn more about the topic and make a feature article more compelling to read. Feature articles are written in paragraphs. I know you are by now familiar with this picture, but to review, there are three important parts of a paragraph. The first is the topic sentence, and this is where you will introduce your topic to readers and share with them what they will be learning. The next two to three sentences are detail sentences. In these sentences, you will be teaching your reader about your topic using true information. The last sentence of a paragraph is the concluding sentence. In this sentence, authors restate the main idea that they want their reader to know. I have really enjoyed looking at your paragraphs so far, and you are all doing a great job including these three parts. There are many different text features an author uses in their feature articles. Authors add a title to their nonfiction feature article to introduce their topic. This helps the reader know what they will be learning about. And then the table of contents, these are often found in books or magazines. Table of contents help the reader locate specific information in a nonfiction te text. Since feature articles are typically one to two pages long, you will not find a table of contents on a feature article, but can use one to help you find a specific feature article in a magazine or book. Headings are often located under the title and are a sentence or two that will give your reader a preview of what they will be learning. This is a common text feature, or this is a common um, text feature in feature articles that have more than one paragraph. And then photographs are real pictures that the author adds to give more information on the topic. These help make feature articles more compelling. They help the reader picture what the author wants you to know. Captions are located underneath the photo or near the photo and help explain to the reader what the photograph is. This helps the reader to better understand what they are looking at. Labels are used to show a specific part of a picture or diagram. For example, if you had a picture of different types of dogs in your feature article, you might use labels to help tell the, and name each type of dog. And then bold words or bold print are bigger or highlighted words that are important to the text and important for the reader to know. Diagrams, charts, and maps are also used to help give the reader inf more information about the topic. And then lastly, you can find an index in many nonfiction books or magazines. It is located in the back of the book and can help you find specific information. For example, if you were reading a book on dogs and wanted to know more about beagles, you can use the index to find which pages beagles are mentioned. Now let's take a look at an example of a feature article that I wrote earlier today. This feature article is about the life cycle of a butterfly. I added a few text features to make this article more compelling for my reader. First, I added a title so my reader knows what they will be learning about from the slide and from this article. I also added a photograph and caption to show my readers what a butterfly looks like as it leaves its chrysalis. I also added a label so my readers knew what the chrysalis was. Lastly, I added a word to know box and a bolded word. I decided that life cycle was an important word in this article and my readers needed to know what it means. For my paragraph, since my reader will be learning about the life cycle of a paragraph, I wrote, butterflies have many unique stages in their life cycle. This introduces my topic to the reader. In the next two to three sentences, tell my reader what the different stages of a butterfly, butterfly's life cycle are. I wrote, the first stage of a butterfly's life cycle is an egg, then it will hatch into a hungry caterpillar. Next, the caterpillar will shed its skin and grow into a chrysalis. Finally, after 10 to 14 days, 
the butterfly wiggles out of the chrysalis and is ready to fly. These are the many stages of a butterfly's life. And that last sentence that I just read, it restated my main idea. So it was my closing sentence. Now, I'm sure you've noticed something off about my paragraph and feature article. Looking back, I noticed I didn't use correct capital letters and punctuation. We will need to make sure, as writers, we use correct capitalization and correct punctuation to help our readers better understand our writing. Punctuation is like a code for readers. It tells your reader how you want them to read your writing. As you write your paragraphs, you will need to make sure you include correct punctuation when needed. Periods go at the end of sentences, exclamation marks show excitement at the end of a sentence, and question marks tell your reader that you are asking a question. You should also include commas when you want your reader to take a pause while reading, and you will also use commas when you are writing a list and need to separate each item on your list. It is also important to use correct capitalization. I know you are familiar with a Sanger chart. We need to capitalize months, the letter I, names and proper nouns, titles, and the start of new sentences. Capitalizing words allow them to be set apart from the other words in a sentence. A capital letter is like a highlight. It draws the reader's attention to it. Now we are going to go back into my feature article and edit my feature article to have correct capitalization and punctuation. Soon you are going to write your own uh, another feature article and I want you to focus on using capital letters and punctuation. And if you want to refer back to these past two slides to help you and use as a checklist to make sure that you also have the correct punctu punctuation and capitalization as needed, that would be a great idea. All right, so first I see my title and I have not capitalized my title. So I am going to go back and make sure the first letter of the words in my title are capitalized. I don't need to capitalize of or a because they're not big words or major words in our title, but I do want to make sure that I capitalize life, cycle, and butterfly. Now as I move on to my paragraph, I notice that the first letter is the first word letter of my sentence and it is not capitalized. So I will need to change that lowercase b to an uppercase b. And let's keep reading to make sure I have the correct punctuation and the correct uh, cap letters that I need. So butterflies have many unique stages in their life cycle, period. That period tells my reader that I want them to take a pause. So I will keep that one there and I also included a capital letter after my period. So let's keep reading. The first stage of a butterfly's life cycle is an egg. So that is the first sentence that I have and it is the first stage of the life cycle. So after an egg, I want to put a period because I want to tell my reader that the next sentence will talk about the next cycle of the, of the butterfly's life cycle. So since I ended my sentence there and I want my reader to take a pause in their reading, I am going to have to capitalize the next letter of my, the next letter since that's the start of the next sentence. Also, I want my reader to read this sentence like then, break, or pause, it will hatch into a hungry caterpillar, net, hungry caterpillar. So after then, I want my reader to take a pause, but since then isn't a complete sentence, I'm going to add a comma. So now my readers will read it, then it will take, it will hatch into a hungry caterpillar. Awesome, that's the end of my sentence, so I'm going to put a period at the end of, cap, of caterpillar. But that means I now need to capitalize next. Again, I want my readers to take a pause after saying reading next, but it, since it is not a complete sentence, I am going to add a comma, and now my readers will read this sentence. Next, the caterpillar will shed its skin and grow into a chrysalis. That's the next sentence, so I'm going to end it with a period, and then finally should be capitalized. And then after finally, again, I want my reader to take a pause, so finally, comma, after 10 to 14 days, the butterfly wiggles out of the chrysalis and is ready to fly. So that's my next and last, last detail sentence. So I'm going to put a period there and then I am also going to want to capitalize that next letter 
These are the many stages of a butterfly's life cycle, period. So what you are going to do now for your activity is you are going to look at, you're going to use this activity, and the instructions are very similar to last week, so you will pick one of the topics below to write your paragraph on, and then you will write a complete set paragraph with a topic sentence, two to three detail sentences, and a concluding sentence on your topic that you choose. And then you will add two to three text features to make your article more compelling. And then the fourth step, which is the next new step, I want you to really make sure that your um, paragraphs and your feature articles have the correct punctuation and capitalization that you need. So then I have my example that I'm going to fix and I'll edit this to make sure I also have the correct capitalization and punctuation that I need. And then you can choose between one of the options between storms, farm animals, bugs, sports, and then your choice as well. Um, if, you, if none of those options are appealing to you, you can also choose your own topic and write that on your slide here. Um, but then once you're finished, your job is to double check and make sure that you have the correct capitalization and punctuation that you need.